Okay, so for a brief overview of Nash Equilibria or Equilibrium, um, we're going to be looking at the pure type. Um, the other type, of course, is a mixed type. Uh, a mixed will be basically when you apply probabilities to your decisions. Um, so basically, there'll be games where we can't solve it uh, by the method of iterated elimination of dominated strategies. Now what happens in these finite games is that we will end up at what's known as a Nash Equilibrium. Possibly there might be two of them, or more. Um, and at these Nash Equilibrium, um, each player has no need or has nothing to gain from making another decision. So, firstly, what type of game can't we solve by the method of iterated elimination of dominated strategies. I'm going to give a brief example. So we'll have a three strategy, two player game. Okay, let's try to solve this game uh, by the method of iterated elimination. So for player 1 here, R1 dominates or is dominated by absolutely nothing. How's this? Well, we look across at R1, we have 0, 3, 1. Um, let's compare this to R2. So 0 is less than 3, but 3 is greater than minus 1, and 1 is less than 3, so there's no dominance um, between these two. Let's compare it with R3 here. Um, 0 is less than 1, but, but then 3 is more than 2, and 1 is less than 4. So you can't have um, two values being less than a value, another one being greater than. There's no dominance here. And the same goes for all um, R1, 2, and 3 uh, relative to each other. Um, so we can't eliminate any strategies. However, how about player 2? Uh, let's have a look at S3. 1, 0, and 5. In S2 we have 1, 2, and 3. Well, these are equal, and 2 is greater than 0, but then 5 is greater than 3, so there's no dominance between these two. And between S3 and S1, 2 is greater than 1, but then minus 1 and 0. So I'm not going to go through it all, but you can see there's no um, sort of dominating strategies here. So what we can do is we can look for a Nash equilibrium. And I'm going to give you the definition of that now and then a method of finding it. Okay, so a pure Nash equilibrium is a pair of strategies such that the following hold. Now, this will appear quite formal, but in reality, when I've done an example, it'll make a lot of sense. So, bear with me. Okay, so, such that for utility 1, R and S are greater than utility 1 for a separate value of R and the same value of S for every R in strategy set 1. So all we're saying is that for this point um, with a fixed strategy S, R is greater than any other choice of R. So that's straightforward. And of course the reverse for S. Must be greater than or equal to utility 2 for Apologies. So that's not got a uh, hat on it there, obviously. That's for all S in the second strategy group for player 2. So the same uh, principle here, same principle here. 
we want the best choice for R and S relative to the other available choices in their individual strategy sets. So at a Nash equilibrium, uh, neither player has anything to gain by changing their own strategy. It's essentially a place on a game matrix where they will just end up staying no matter how long the game goes on for. Um, we can find a Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibria by checking every strategy pair and we see if either player uh, can improve their situation from that strategy. However, there's actually a pretty nice way of looking uh, which is called the best response strategy and I'll quickly show you that now. Okay, so the best response strategy, or best response strategies. So I'll quickly give you the definition. So a strategy for player one R asterisk is a best response. to a fixed strategy uh, by player two which we obviously will have as S if you won for our asterisk and fixed S is again greater than or equal to u1 for any other value of r at the same s. So I think this is making quite a lot of sense and obviously we have um, the same for player 2. Um, so strategy for player 2 and of course in this case we have variable s um, is the best response to a fixed strategy by player 1 which will be R if U2 for R and S is greater than U2 for R and any other value for S in that set of strategies. Straightforward. So how do we use this to find a Nash equilibria? Basically, going back to our original matrix, and I'll use a different color pen, I'll use black here. So let's see how to use this to find a Nash equilibrium. So so the best response for player two here for a fixed strategy R1 is S1 because we have 2, 1 and 1 and the biggest one is 2. Now the best response for player 2 for fixed strategy R2 is S2 because we have minus 1, 2 and 0 and obviously for a fixed strategy R3 well, we have 4, 3, and 5, so we highlight the uh, 5 there. Okay, now how about for player 1? Um, so for fixed strategy S1, the largest value is R2, 3. And for fixed strategy S2, the largest value is in R1, which is 3. So, so far we don't have any Nash equilibriums or equilibria present because we don't have any fully sort of black outlined pairs. Um, so for fixed strategy S3, 
one, three, and four. Oh, ding, ding, ding. We have a Nash equilibrium. Easy.